everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the comments to the Return of the Orange video, somebody said, I want more fruit-themed spacecraft. And that got the wheels of my brain turning. And I thought about what kind of fruit might work as a spacecraft. Not all fruit would make for a good spacecraft, you know, depending on the shape. And I decided that the one that could work would be a pear. And I got the idea for a pear-shaped spacecraft. And you could uh, you could figure it out, you know. You could imagine the little top part will be a capsule and the body of the pear would be a uh, sort of fuel tank, right? I mean, that makes sense. Uh, but the green color suggested that this would have to be a Soviet spacecraft because they had the green textures. And so I came up with this. So behold, the pear, or as it's officially known, Grusha. Uh, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, but Google Translate said that Grusha was pear in Russian, so there it is. So the, now, if we have a single tank like this, that suggests either it's a monopropellant thing like hydrazine, or it's liquid hydrogen and we need, we need a nuclear engine then. So I've got a nuclear engine, and it's a real nuclear engine. It is the only one that the Soviets ever tested. It's the RD-0410. In fact, if we type that in here, uh, Realism Overhaul modified the stock nerve into the RD-0410, so it's a legit engine. Mine's is actually a tiny bit heavier, um, also apparently much more expensive, which I think is realistic. Uh, but also, oh, the 902C level ISP is somewhat dubious on this. I have no idea sometimes what they come up with. Anyway, so I made a fairly simple model. I might spiffify the model for the RD0410 later on. But it's very uh, weak. It's 35.3 kilonewtons, 2 tons. So it doesn't have the greatest thrust weight ratio, 1.8. A thrust weight ratio of 1.8. Uh, and I would like the permission of my audience to propose a RD0410A, which will be lighter, and maybe a 0410B that will actually match the thrust weight ratio of the nerve. Nerva, sorry, the actual Nerva, the one NASA tested. Just the thrust weight ratio, not the thrust. Uh, so I might make those changes later on. So anyway, that is the engine here, and we have got a huge uh, hydrogen tank. This is all one spacecraft, so there's only two parts. Well, okay, three parts. This isn't made by me. This is just a Soyuz docking system by um, somebody. Um, uh, they didn't put a prefix to their part. So that's that docking port's not made by me. The, this whole thing is one part, and then we have the RD0410 here. So that is the idea. And the goal with this is, now this, since it's only one part, it can't return into the atmosphere of Earth, right? It's not like Soyuz. Oh, it's a good idea to do a size comparison here. Uh, let's take the Soyuz orbital module. Uh, let me just type in Soyuz. Uh, so here's uh, Soyuz TMA orbital module. And you can see that this uh, module is just a little bit bigger than that one. Not a huge amount, but it'll give enough extra volume so that basically uh, the actual spare volume between the orbital module and the descent module, that will cover it. And the idea is that it's got enough space for three people to go to the moon. So this will transfer to the moon, make orbit around the moon, dock with something, and then come back. And that's the hope. Unfortunately, we don't have quite enough delta V. If you think about going and coming back, we need 3,100 to get there, 800 to make orbit, 800 to break orbit, and then 3,100 to get back into lower orbit because we can't ever break. So we need to do a propulsive capture all the way back in. That's costly, but doable with a nuclear engine, but we need a 7,800 meters per second, not 7,200. So that's one reason why I want to get a lighter version of this engine we are currently on the correct size. You can see the dry mass 7.5 tons, so um, though without the engine, the two-ton engine, uh, and dumping the hydrogen here, we are 5.462 tons. So remembering that, 
let's see about the space. The orbital module here, um, so that is just one ton. The descent module here is 2.5 tons, but that's with its heat shield. So, or maybe it's not. I think it's with its heat shield. Anyway, it's got a whole bunch of things like little thrusters and such. It's a busy, busy sort of odd. But anyway, you get the idea. Uh, these two put together are, uh, I mean, I think it's best to think of the orbital module because the descent module is heat shielded and everything. So that's one ton. This, I, I'm assuming, is more than that, but not too much more. We do have antennae, by the way. Uh, just little tiny ones, but there they are. And I couldn't get by without having something poke out of a Soviet module. And then we have the tank. So the tank is based on a procedural tank. Integral structure, just one. There we go. So it's like that. And if we go aluminum lithium on it, it's two tons. So that's what I sort of based it on. And hydrogen. That this gives it a suddenly 3.7 tons. I'm hoping it not be that much. Uh, but and we'll need some MLI, MLI layers. That seems a little bit overdone. Uh, we could go balloon on it, though. Uh, I think just going with this mass is okay. So we've got basically uh, two, two and a bit. I mean, two point five tons of pod, and then two point two tons of tank is what I'm going with here, and then a whole bunch of hydrogen in there. It's got fuel cells, but of course, it's also got a nuclear engine, so power can be supplied like that. But the reason why there's 6.6 .6 meters, except for, there, there are many reasons that we could have, but the main one is the block V, which is the third stage of the N1. It's this tank here. We're just using the same tank from N1 up here. So I'm just copying that tank. So that's why it's that size, aside from the fact that 6.6 .6 happens to be a very convenient size. Okay, but... We've got all this put together, and it's 17 tons, which means we can launch it on a proton launcher. The problem is, proton launcher is not that wide, uh, and so it looks awkward. But we're, we're going to try and launch it, and we're going to try and send it to the moon as a lunar transfer vehicle on proton, and that will be our pair. So let's see our crew. Valentina, Bob, and Jenfert seems fine. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, well, uh, it doesn't look too bad. It's a very Kerbalish sort of situation, let's face it. We are uh, going out from Baikonur. We'll try and minimize our inclination with respect to the moon. Though, obviously, from Baikonur, that's a little bit harder, so we're, we may have a bit of a problem. We'll see. Timing is more important from here than from, from other locations. Um, you know what? We'll take that relative location. <laughs> Screw it. I want to go. All right, so SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. So we have a little bit of liquid oxygen here, you'll note, and that's for the fuel cell as a backup power system. This is, of course, Raider Nix Proton. And I, I hope Raider Nick is happy with this uh, Soviet spacecraft I've made. It's not a real proposal. Uh, they were testing a nuclear engine. I have no idea what they were going to use it on, but I don't think it was anything like this. We probably don't want the fairings going at the same time as the stage. Okay. Hot staging. And separation. Now the problem with it is that it's got a obnoxious burn time. Oh, we can't even see it anymore. Um, it's got more than a 30 minute burn time, that nuclear engine. So that's not good. I'd rather it not have such a long burn time. And we can, you know, fix that with proposing a better thrust to weight ratio version of it. Okay, fairing set. Off it goes. And there is our... Here. 
I had to come up with a reasonable reason uh, for why it is a pair, and I think I have. So, but of course we would like to have some sort of struts around the RD0410. That would be nice. Uh, oh gosh, I didn't put MLI layers. We definitely need those. Uh, we'll test what we can test. No, oh, I forgot to hot stage. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Alright, off. Well within the capacity of Proton, so... No worries. And shut down. 245 by 189. If we wanted to pack some more fuel in here, we could. And we need the MLI layers. Technically, the total volume of this is 140... 1,700. We're only using 131,000, so we could use more. Uh, the rest of the stuff is either in the pod or in these spheres here. Incidentally, the spheres, um, there are two UDMH, two NTO, and then there's two water and two oxygen ones. So, and then there's eight total spheres around there. Um, the nitrogen can be kept inside the pod. It doesn't occupy that much space. So, that's that. So basically that's the service module in the middle there, those tanks. Okay, so anyway, separation. Alright. Of course, Proton could get 17 tons up. That shouldn't be a problem. Now, getting to the moon though, that's a bit more fancy. Maybe we could do a mid-course adjustment, or should we just take extra time. Uh, that would take 10 days. Technically, we have 18 days of food, water, and oxygen. And really, I should have underdid the water and oxygen because those can be replenished by the liquid oxygen and the fuel cell. Speaking of which, uh, well, I don't really need to use the fuel cell because the nuclear engine is replenishing that. All right, we'll try and go there in, in 10 days. Okay, that might be close enough. All right, let's get the engines ready. RCS on. Okay, RCS is working. To the node, please. Okay, RCS works good. Hopefully we've got enough UDMH NTO. We've got more volume available than we're actually using with all this stuff. So if it turns out we need more, we can put it in there. But then we're also carrying more mass, so we have to think about that. All right, well, we're going to be off anyway. I'm going to try and light the engine, and it's going to take a while. Oh, vapor and feed lines. Oops. So fuel down. It says stable. Okay. Now it's doing its pink puff situation. I gave it 240 ignitions. I have no idea how many it actually have. Okay, so here we go, and I'm going to use full physical time warp. Because 38 minute burn time here right now. Thought about putting two on, but of course that makes for a whole lot more dry mass that will only kill our delta V. Technically the stem of the pair like this is on the wrong side, right? The stem ought to be on this side. So... A little bit of a flaw in the pair, like that. But the docking port definitely has to be with the capsule, so... Okay, well, we're well off from where we were supposed to be as far as the burn, but... Again, long burn time. We'll see what we get. Now, of course, it could potentially be refueled around the moon if we have some in-situ resource utilization and they drill for water and... Actually, it'd be easier to carry up the liquid hydrogen for something efficient like the nuclear engine that we've got here than it would be to bring up both hydrogen and oxygen for a hydrolox system, I think. I mean, assuming you're launching it from the surface of the moon to get it into orbit. We'll have to work out the math on that. Okay, this is a heck of a correction, but I'll make it. 
it is admittedly a very green pair. I mean, it's, you know, a darker green than normal pears would be, but I think there's a closer shade to the color of actual Soviet spacecraft, so. We could potentially just dump the liquid oxygen if we're not going to use the fuel cell. Of course, having the liquid oxygen in the fuel cell allows us to potentially use some other engine except for a nuclear one that provides power. There are nuclear ones that don't provide power, incidentally. Really dark around here. So we could get into orbit, break orbit, and go back and get into a lower orbit around the Earth, but we can't drop our orbit all the way down to LEO right now. We will have to do things a little bit better. Honestly, launching from Cape Canaveral would be better, <laughs> among other things. Uh, now, potentially, you wouldn't have to launch people on this, just in case you were worried about the proton reliability. Uh, this could launch to the ISS uncrewed and then pick up the crew at the ISS and then go from there. That's another possibility. I, th I think that basically demonstrates that it can capture. I'm not going to bring it back just yet because we don't have enough uh, Delta V to get into a low orbit. There is another way to launch it though if we're concerned about Proton or you don't like the huge fairing and I came up with this. Uh, basically thanks to my you know the basis for the main tank here yeah so maybe you can guess what kind of launcher we're talking about but let's go to the VAB I'm gonna revert this and go to the VAB and talk about that option okay so what we have here is the upper two stages of the N1 rocket that's it just the upper two stages, and remember, since this tank is just a tank at the top of this stage, um, well, it fits pretty well, of course. This is only a little bit heavier than Proton, but it can launch more than this. It can launch more than the Grusha or the Pear, and it lifts off pretty well even though we've got the vacuum engines, because the vacuum engines here, the NK-15Vs, uh, do have a reasonable sea level ISP 260. This doesn't look great, but it'll work. The question is, uh, can it actually hold itself given... I mean, the N1 had grid fins, it had all sorts of stuff going on, but can this work as a launch vehicle? It certainly has the Delta V here, and it's got the thrust weight ratio 1.43, you can see there. Now this has to toss the upper stage pretty well so that it can get through its six minutes of burn time so that's a that's a catch because its thrust weight ratio is only 0.79 there so I mean we could underfuel this and that could be a way to go even if we underfuel it to this level uh, that's still enough delta V to launch the pair but then we get to pretty close to a thrust weight ratio of one but I'll see whether we can just do it fully fueled and we will work from there so yeah uh, Proton uh, topped off is something like 680, 680 tons is 750. And let's see if this works. Who knows? Well, it's certainly a stubby thing, and it's going to incur quite a lot of drag, so there's that. We'll see. I'm not going to line up with the moon or anything. There's just a launch test in this case. So, um, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. launch. I wouldn't say it's a cheaper launcher than Proton. Though, I mean, so Proton, you end up with six engines first stage, four second stage, one plus verniers on the third stage. That's 11 plus. This has 12. Uh, eight engines on the first stage, four on the second stage. So, you know, depends how you look at it. And these are somewhat more complicated engines. Though non, not as toxic fuels, right? It's just kerosene and oxygen. You can see the get up and go is pretty convincing on this stage at least. I don't want to release the fairings immediately. Let's keep that off for a sec. Okay, hot staging. And separation. 
All right. Well, let's see if we make it. We're not actually excel. Oh, we need to throttle up too. I I forgot. I didn't think these throttled actually. Oh well. I guess they do. All right, fairing set. We've, that, we've got the Delta V, and I think we've got enough time to apoapsis, but I might pitch up a little bit more. For now, I'm not going to uh, package up the pair. We'll see whether it makes the cut into my experimental mod pack. It's sort of a specialty sort of thing, anyway. Oh, I didn't even extend the antennae, did I, before? They're not the most prominent antennae ever. Well, Delta V-wise, it's a bit closer than I thought. We're ending up in a higher orbit, of course, just to give this stage some time. Uh, we can probably flatten out now. So this is looking good. Uh, this looks like an alternate way for the pair to get into orbit. And shut down. 282 by 228. Yep, so just using the upper two stages of N1 works as a thing just in case you were wondering. Um, but capacity, probably about the same as Proton. And RCS on. Anyway, but more works, work needs to be done for this in order to make it capable of doing what I wanted to do, which is to transfer to the moon, make orbit around the moon, rendezvous with something, break orbit around the moon, and get back to Earth, low Earth orbit, propulsively without having to aero capture so that's the goal i don't think i can get by with making the oh i forgot the mli layers again uh making the the body of this any lighter i think you know we basically made it as light as i pause i mean yeah i could posit balloon tanks okay there could be a balloon tank version of this right now this is not sized based on balloon tanks as if this hydrogen tank is a balloon tank i don't think it's fair to make it into a balloon tank for the duration that we're going for here. I don't know. Uh, if they come up with a centaur that can last uh, for two weeks and that stays a balloon tank, I might think about that. I'll look at the, at the masses of centaur and see what could be plausible for this. But this is still a pretty big hydrogen tank here. Uh, mainly, if we're going to cut mass, it's probably going to be this engine, which is two tons all on its own. And, of course, we could be helped out by having more thrust from it as well. Efficiency, we can't get anything better. It had 9, 10, 910 seconds of ISP, and that's basically what we would expect from this kind of engine. So, not touching that. Um, we could probably dump the liquid oxygen if we're not going to use the fuel cell, and that's a little bit that we could save. So, just thinking about things like that, and perhaps modifications will be made but for now uh, give me your thoughts about this system the pair with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time